Hello, this is Margaret with Noble Desktop, and today I will be reviewing motion keyframes in Premiere Pro. Motion keyframes are a change in the scale or in the position of your clip on the timeline. Keyframes are many things, but a motion keyframe is, in a nutshell, that. So I want to create an artificial zoom in on him. So that's creating a change in the scale of this clip. So I have my effects control panel up. Um, you might notice I'm in assembly mode. The new version of Premiere is a little clunky as far as accessing it. It's taking me a while to get used to it for anybody that's been editing for a minute. But um, if you don't see your effects control panel, go to window effects controls, window effects control. You need to have that open to create keyframes. You need at least two keyframes to make a change. The first keyframe represents where the change begins. The second keyframe represents where the change ends. And what's between those is the action. Saying, okay, right here. That's where I want to start zooming in on this guitarist. So in my effects control panel, I have motion. I'm going to open that up. And here we have what's called toggle animation, little buttons there. Now, this is your first way of activating your ability to keyframe. I'm going to click on position and scale. I'm actually creating two sets of keyframes because often when you increase the scale of something, you also want to increase its position in the frame. For example, when I zoom in on him, I may also want to bring him over to the left or the right or up or down. As soon as I clicked on these two toggle animation buttons, you might have noticed these diamonds appeared. These are keyframes. Here is the position keyframe, this diamond, and here is the scale keyframe, this diamond. So it says, okay, I'm ready, you want a keyframe. What do you want to do? Well, the first thing I want to do is say where the keyframe ends. So I'm going to move my playhead here. By the time I get here, I would like to be zoomed in on him. Now, I do not click on these diamonds. I do not click on these toggle animations again. The only thing I do is increase the numbers. I can reposition it. X, Y axis are these numbers here. You could, also, you could also click here and reposition him right in the page. I'm gonna have a nice zoom in. So I wanna see what my keyframe looks like. I'm gonna go use my back arrow. That takes me to my first set of keyframes and let's watch it. All right, you know what I want? I like the way that this ended. I like. I like how close I am on him when I get to the second keyframe, but I'd like it to be faster. So the way to make it faster is I'm going to highlight both these and just make it closer to the first set. So it knows what I told it to do, but now it has less time to do it. So now it's, um, a, it's the exact same look that I wanted, but it's a, a faster way of getting there. If I want it to be slower, I could just push these back. And again, I'm selecting both of these. Just to keep in mind that I'm selecting the position keyframe, and I'm also selecting the scale keyframe. So now this is gonna be super slow. It all depends on what kind of look you're going for. All right, I'm gonna, I'm actually also going to, I'm gonna put my playhead towards the beginning of my clip. I actually want it to start right at the beginning of the clip. So I'm going to move my keyframes right to the beginning of the clip. And maybe I'll just scoot this over because I'm going to make another set of keyframes as well. So now I have this first one. So now if I wanted to pause here for a moment and then make another set of keyframes that go down to his hands, that's when I would click on these diamonds. The only time you click on this is if you want to delete a keyframe or if you want to add a keyframe. You might remember that when I created my second set of keyframes, I just changed the numbers. I didn't click on, you don't click on these. You just start working and your second keyframe is created. But if I want to create a pause, that's when I would click on these. So it's going to zoom in as planned. We're going to pause here. And now because keyframes work in pairs, this set and then whatever else I do here is going to be the next one. I'm not going to click on this again. I'm not going to ever click on these again. I'm just going to start with my numbers. So this time I'm going to, I think I might just go down. 
Let's move over, just go down to his hands a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Here's my pause, and now here's the zoom down to his hands to create a kind of um, an artificial camera move. Um, I'm not sure that I like that. I'm gonna go on my second set of keyframes, back arrow, and I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. Maybe I'll adjust it. Maybe I'll make it even a little bit larger as well. Make it more of, um, look like a more purposeful close up. I think he's kind of hitting the guitar, which might be um, a good view. So let's see. So here's my pause and here's my movement down. That had a little more energy. That's a little better. So keyframes. Changes from your first keyframe to your second keyframe. That's all they are. And they work in anything you can imagine from something turning gradually blurry, something getting gradually louder. Um, there's um, an assortment of use, but this is just the very basic introduction to motion keyframes. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to use motion keyframes in Premiere Pro. This has been Margaret for Noble Desktop.